my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be continuing with a second round of gameplay for the Defense of Procyon 3. Yes, again, this is designed by David Turksey and published by PSC Games, who are sponsoring this tutorial series. Monique and I played uh, earlier a round one of this game, and so now we're going to pick up with round two. Also, we did a full tutorial, which is linked in the description, so if you want to know the nuts and bolts of how to play the game, that's also there. And like Naveen said, we're going to be picking up from where we left mm -hmm. off, which means we're hopefully going to be able to uh, reap the benefits of some moves that we were kind of setting up in the mm -hmm. first round, right? So now we are ready to begin. So if you please direct your attention to this side of the table, we're all set up here for our continuation of the Defense of Procyon 3 with the land board. Mm -hmm. Now in the first round of gameplay, the alien principal player was kind of making some moves over here. They did a damage to the building and took out some combat units and are also moving in this direction to show a nice big strong of force. <laughs> Unfortunately for them, the humans have also started moving in towards this area, trying to potentially target the Empress. So that is where we are picking up from today. Take it away, Naveen, with the principal player. All right, so normally I would have three actions, but unfortunately, because of the way the expedition player played, they forced me to discard two cards. So now I'll have two in my hand, meaning I can take a maximum of two total actions during this turn. The first one I'm gonna play is this card, and I'm gonna use it for the bottom portion here. This says, deal two damage to a Centurion of my choice then perform the special effect of a card in my discard pile. Ooh. So I'm gonna go ahead and deal two damage to this one, the one that's kind of just hanging out here. Okay. Uh, it's not really in the thick of anything. And then now I'm gonna thumb through my discard pile. And this is the power of the principle. That's right. And so I'm gonna choose to do this one. Uh, it's gonna be rise and charge. Select up to two fallen and spawn each of them twice. Again, spawning a fallen, I can either spawn critters, which is just a hypothetical creature, which basically scores points. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to spawn legions instead, which are these tiny little units. Uh, and it says, if I spawn at least one legion, you may attack one of their locations. Then remove this card from play. So I am going to use the spawning on these two over here. So I'm okay. gonna take these both out. And I'm actually gonna spawn four legions. Oh, so we're okay. gonna have one, two, three, four. And I'm doing this again because it says I can spawn from each fallen twice. And because I spawned at least one legion here, I'm gonna be attacking this because that's what the card allows me to do. Nice. So the way we do the math on this is I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total units dividing by two, rounding up. And that's how many cubes I'm gonna pull out of the bag. So. I'm hoping to draw something pretty nice. So what is that, four? Four total, yeah. I'm really wanting to take out this building and I want to kill these scientists. Wow. Yeah, I'm trying to be a little evil. <laughs> right. Here we go. Okay. All right, so I drew two, and two, two and two. Okay, so that means there is no deflector shield nor absorption field here, so I get to assign the, the damage. I must assign to this building first, which is a good thing. Yeah. I want to do that, so I'm destroying this building. It has two hit points. One in the first round, now second one here. Immediately when that happens, we are going to create a sky beam. Nice. So this is going to help me in space in the future. For every sky beam that's out when one gets created, you're going to score one point. So because this is the first one, we have one point. Nice. Now I do have to defend these because anytime the human player could destroy these, they are going to score points as well. Now the second attack is going to take out one of these scientists. So we got our first mm. one on the morale track. We're not going to lose any points for the human player, unfortunately, because it says zero here. But as we get rid of more scientists and kill them off, hopefully we can get some negative points on the humans. You're also one step closer to that 10 track. Yep. As soon as you, you kill 10 scientists, then you win the, game. the game. Yeah. So. yeah. And before I take my next action, I have to put cubes back in the bag. So because I drew more than one focus cube, one of them is going to be out of the game. And then these two, or these three, are going to go right back in the bag. So it's going to kind of slow me down just a little bit potentially. Yeah, on your ratio is just a little bit not as great. That's right. And then also uh, I get to remove, the, or I have to remove this card from play. It's never going to come back because that's what it says at the bottom after I used it. Right. Okay, and the second action I'm going to take, I'm actually going to be using my directives board. So we don't even have to worry about what's on the front side here. I'm going to be covering this spot up over here. And so what it says is I can select one fallen and spawn from it twice. I have no fallen on the board, so I'm not going to do that portion. Mm -hmm or I can remove up to two Discord cubes from the bag. Nice. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to do that. So let's go ahead and just kind of put this here for right now. Uh, I'm gonna be removing two white cubes from the bag, making my attack a little bit stronger potentially in the future. Yeah, since you muddied it a little bit I there, did, so. yeah. Okay, here are the two cubes that are gonna go out. And so let's go ahead and move this the way it's supposed to look like yep. that, okay? Cool. And now I'm gonna perform this bottom portion here. This one says, add one damage to a Centurion to attack its location. 
you may remove the deflector from that location before resolving the attack. Now I'm looking to attack in this eastern settlement here. There is no deflector shield here, and this is an absorption field, so that does not apply, this text right here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is attack or damage my Centurion here just a little bit mm. in order to perform an attack here in this eastern settlement while I have it. So same protocol here. We're going to draw three cubes total because we have one, two, three, four, five divided by two rounding up. So we are going to okay. take three cubes and hopefully do some damage. That absorption field is going to be a little bit of a problem. For this me. is not looking good for these guys over here. Okay. And we have two and one. Okay. So... Uh, again, there's an absorption field there, so that's going to take the first damage that we have. So that absorption field goes out. All right. Very good for you. <laughs> and then now uh, I have to figure out who I want to attack. Do I want to attack this militia and take them out of the game, or do I want to knock this Marine down on their side? Uh, I think I want to take out that militia. I'd, I'd like to take Marines out all at once. Yeah, let's, let's get that one out of there. All right. All You're right. out. Yeah, so no scientists. I couldn't get to them. But because, again, I drew uh, an extra focus cube, one is going to go out and the other two are going to go back in my bag. Ah, your sweet, sweet ratio. My sweet ratio, <laughs> yes. And so uh, because that is all my cards, I don't have an extra one to play. That ends my turn. So I'm going to draw up to four, which is good. I need four cards going into the next round. Yeah. This is looking real bad for my scientists. And so I think some moves need to be made to rescue some scientists. We have one at the ready right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably gonna try to beam this scientist up. It's gonna take some time to fully rescue the scientist um, on the space board, but at least we can get that started. But we'll deal with that later because now it is the human armada player's turn in space. So I still only have two cards in my hand because I have not done a tactic selection. That is going to take place after the human expedition player's turn this round. If you take a look at the space board, this is where we left off after the first round of gameplay. We have some movement over here, uh, potentially going towards the mothership or maybe just going towards orbit so we can try to uh, be in position for when the scientists land. And we also have some spores in certain locations. So we have a starting kind of defensive wall <laughs> already in the making. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start my turn in the Promethium phase. And seeing as my lunar refinery is still intact, I gain one Promethium from the supply. And so now I have two available to me. So then I'll move into my tactics space by playing this card. I'm going to be playing the Trench Run Targeting card. And as a reminder, I played the Ablative Armor card uh, last round. So this is my active technology. Mm -hmm. It says, while this technology is active, frigates have one additional shield. So this no longer applies because I am no longer at risk of getting attacked. This is going to be the new technology at the end of, of, of the round. And it says I can spend one Prometheum once per attack for one additional damage against a Cobra or the mothership after revealing the combat card. Oh. Now again, this is a technology that is not currently active, so it's not going to apply right now. Sure. But this card is going to allow me to activate five frigates, which is great because right now is when I have the most amount of my frigates still alive. <laughs> <laughs> And as a reminder, when you activate a frigate, they get to do two things. They can do move or combat or a combination of both. Mm -hmm. They just cannot perform ranged combat twice. So I'm going to start by activating this frigate over here because I really do not like this hood placement. Sure. It is causing a lot of different ships to um, increase the value of their hit points, as you can see um, by these tokens. And it also prevents my ships from performing ranged combat yep. while I'm in this zone. So I'm going to try to attack that hood right there. And sure. there's no rule that says I can't do uh, close combat twice. Right. That's probably what I'm gonna do. Now, because I previously pulled two of my combat cards already, I know for a fact that this is a strength of two. Mm. So that hood requires a total of three hit points. There are no modifiers that are increasing the amount of damage that it can take. So here's the first one. And like I said, it's got the strength of two. But now that I pulled all of my combat mm -hmm. cards from my draw deck, I am going to reshuffle this. It's two twos and one four. This is kind of the guessing game yeah. that I'm a little bit stressed out about. Sure. Well, that was uh, two damage. So here's the next one. Oh my gosh, it's the four. Well, in any case, that hood is gone. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it. I'm going to place it here for now so that I can keep track of how many of these uh, ships I, I destroy in this round. And now that that hood is gone, we are going to change the values of these shields. Yep. So that hood was affecting um, the ships in this zone as well as this one, just these two zones. So this is going to go down to a plus two, so and that one's a plus one. So we'll just slide this two in here, and then we just need a one over there. There you go. So now those ships just got a little bit weaker, yeah. which is all part of the plan. Yep. The next frigate I'm going to activate is going to be this one. Okay. So I'm going to move uh, this frigate first into this zone and then perform ranged combat. Sure. And I think I'm going to have this frigate uh, attack the rattle 
because right now the rattle is increasing one of those spores. So this zone actually has a total of five spores in it. So we're gonna try to defeat it. Here's four that combat, and of course it's a two. two. Yep. So because it's uh, technically partial damage, I'm just gonna flip this over to the opposite side and put two of these to show that it has two damage. So it needs one more hit. And that hit is gonna come from my third frigate, which is gonna be this one. I'm gonna use this frigate to perform ranged combat first. And of course, I'm gonna just deal the last amount of damage to that rattle with a two strength yep. right there. You know it. And then this <laughs> gets reshuffled so that I have a combat deck again. So then I'm gonna get, go ahead and discard this and the rattle is gonna go away, which is nice. And then for the second action for this frigate activation, I'm going to move it into this zone. Now that the rattle is gone, there's definitely less of a threat mm -hmm. in here. Um, and I can start using this frigate to uh, to try to defeat the mothership maybe in the next round. I just want some good placement with my stronger ships. Sure. So for my final two activations, I'm just going to move a couple of frigates into a proper position. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to activate this one and I'm just going to move it forward one space. I can technically move it again. It might not be a bad idea to move it into here actually. So what I'll do is I'll use my final activation to activate this frigate and uh, bring it into a neighboring um, orbital zone right there just so I have both the Western and the Eastern Hemisphere covered mm -hmm. and uh, to put some pressure on the neighboring zones because these these guys can do ranged combat. Right. So these fangs are not safe. And that's it for the tactics phase. I activated five different frigates and so now I can go ahead and discard these activation sure. tokens because they no longer apply. And as a reminder, instead of playing a tactics card, I could have opted to do two coordinate actions instead by spending no cards at all. And doing so would allow me to gain uh, additional echo drones. Mm -hmm. I still have two Echo Drones right now, but that might be a good thing to consider in the future. Speaking of Echo Drones, <laughs> it's time to go into the drone phase. Sure. I skipped this phase last time, so this time around I'm going to do it once. <laughs> yeah. um, during this phase I can spend up to two of these, but I'm just going to spend one of them. And this is going to allow me to remove a Spore Cloud that's in a zone that I have at least a Frigate or a Dreadnought in. Gotcha. Only one of these zones uh, is even on the board, and it's this one. Mm -hmm. So I'm basically spending that Echo Drone to decrease this down to three Spore Clouds. Gotcha. That'll help kind of lower the risk by a lot yeah. for when the Meld takes their turn, and I my Frigate is kind of alone and, and in a scary position right vulnerable. there. Vulnerable. They're vulnerable. Yeah. Instead of removing a Spore Cloud, I could have spent an Echo Drone to perform a Ground Strike, but in order for me to do that, I would have to have a Dreadnought in orbit, which mm -hmm. I don't have right now. Right. And now I'm going to end my turn by discarding this uh, Tactics card. This is now my active technology, which again lets me spend one Promethium once per attack mm. for an additional damage against a Cobra or the Mothership after revealing my combat card. That's going to be really powerful if I want to try to attack um, these powerful ships in the next round. Yep. At this point, if there are any scientists that are in sub-orbit, then they would get destroyed. But fortunately, <laughs> there aren't. <laughs> so the scientists live, sort of, to see another day. And now let's go ahead and score some points. So on my turn, I was able to successfully remove two of the meld ships, which mm -hmm. is going to score the humans two points. So now we are at 16. 16, 16 to good. 1. It's looking pretty good. <laughs> it is. All right, and now back to the human expedition player on land. So after last round, I'm going to want to try to save some scientists. I put one in position, and I'm also going to want to start moving my heroes to be in a strategic position so that next round, the human armada player can do a ground strike from space. So I'm going to start my turn by activating a hero, and I think I'm going to activate O'Hare over here okay. using this card that's called Fighters of Earth. So I'm going to go ahead and place an activation token right here to show that uh, O'Hare is my activated hero for the round. Mm -hmm. And then, according to the card, uh, Marines deal two hits instead of one for each of these uh, flag symbols spent on attacking with them this turn. Gotcha. So I'm going to keep this in mind when I spend those momentum symbols. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and place this here. So then moving on to my momentum phase, I'm going to play these two cards for their, uh, their symbols at the top left-hand corner. So that's going to be a total of four momentum. Yeah, that makes sense. And these, of course, will go into my tactics discard pile. But before I spend my momentum symbols, I'm actually going to activate Colonel O'Hare's uh, special ability here which is going to allow me to select up to three combat units, which are going to be either militia, marines, or heroes, mm -hmm. and move each one once to an adjacent location. And then I can place a deflector in O'Hare's location. So I think I'm going to first move O'Hare. And I'm going to move O'Hare uh, over here into the eastern settlement. I'm going to bring this along with him. <laughs> And because of the Fighters of Earth card ability that I played earlier, I'm going to want to move a Marine. And so I'm going to move this Marine as well into the same adjacent location. And since we've vacated the East Pylon um, area, I'm going to bring in some reinforcements by bringing in a militia 
from the city. So I think I'll move this one over here. And they are adjacent through this line right there. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's everything. I do get to um, place a deflector in O'Hara's location. So this is gonna go right there. So now we have a deflector. Nice, it's good movement. So now I'm gonna spend my momentum. I have four of them as a reminder over here. So the first two I'm gonna spend on these two Marines, sure, since yeah. they are going to deal two hits instead of one yeah. for each of those that I spend. It's a good deal. <laughs> so for my first momentum symbol, I'm gonna put uh, these two cubes for this Marine and then another two for the other Marine. So I have two more momentum symbols to spend. I'm gonna spend one of them on attacking with O'Hare. Sure. So there goes one cube right there. And then for the final momentum, I think I'm going to move a scientist to try to get a you know a machine going sure. to get the scientist to safety. Yep. So I'm gonna move this scientist adjacent to the East Pylon location yeah. over here. Not bad. We're trying. Okay. <laughs> These are some trying times, I think. <laughs> Now, I don't get to activate any of the buildings because I did not spend any power. Mm -hmm. And so this pretty much ends my momentum phase. I'm going to now move into my drone phase mm -hmm. where I think I will spend this last Echo drone over here to beam up the scientist. Sure. Because it is time. It's time to start saving these people. So I'm going to go ahead and spend this Echo drone. Alternatively, by the way, I could have spent that Echo drone to drop a Marine from orbit now that I have some uh, properly placed frigates. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like at this time, uh, launching a scientist into space is probably going to be a little bit more valuable. So then this scientist is going to get launched into space. We flip the scientist over and add two Promethium to the scientist transport and place them in the eastern suborbit zone, since that is technically where they came from on the land board. Mm -hmm. At this point, the human armada player gets one free movement as long as it is not a scientist transport vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so for this free movement, I think I'm going to move my dreadnought because this might be a very good opportunity for me to get the Dreadnought into an orbital zone so that I can perform a ground strike in the future. I do want to note that this movement has to be in the direction of the scientist transport area, which it was. And that's it for launching that scientist. The Armada player will have one round to get that scientist transport out of suborbit, or else they will perish. I think it was done at a pretty good time though, mm -hmm. so I, I feel pretty confident about that. And now to end my turn, we are going to assign this damage. There's five total damage in this area, and we're going to go back and forth, starting with me. So I think I'm going to try to assign as much as possible towards the Empress over here. Mm -hmm. So my first one is going to be... Uh, towards the Empress. All right, so I'm going to lose one token here. So the Empress only has four health now remaining. That's great. Uh, I definitely don't want to assign to the Empress, so I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and... So I don't want to lose that Centurion, so I'm going to get rid of a Legion right here. Ah. No points for Monique, but, uh, you know, keeps me safe. So that's that cube. For now. For now. <laughs> so, of course, I'm going to assign to the Empress again. Yeah, okay. So now She's the chipping Empress... away. Chipping away. She's down to three. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, I think I will have the Centurion take a hit, unfortunately. Okay. So the Centurion now it only has four health, whereas it started the game with seven. Right. And so that cube goes out. All right. And for the final one, of course, I'm going to hit the Empress ah, okay. one more time. Wow. You really did a good turn there. Okay. So... The Empress, so is, Empress is, is not, down to two. Not looking too good. She's no. got bandages all <laughs> over her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she can't really take much more damage there. No. And that is it. There is no more damage on the board. So I'm going to finally end my turn by drawing back up to four. So now we're going to end this second round of gameplay with the alien melt player back in space. Now, before we finish off the round with the meld, I'm going to first do my tactic selection mm -hmm. because uh, it is after the human expedition player's turn in the second round. Right. And when performing the tactic selection, you draw six cards from your tactics draw deck. You choose three of them to get shuffled into your combat draw deck. Any combat cards that you have in your discard will stay there so mm -hmm. they do not get shuffled back in. And three of them will go into your hand so that you have more selection to choose from in the future. All right, so now back to me as the meld player. I basically have to react to everything that's happened over the course of the round. And I don't really like what I see over here in the <laughs> orbit. We have frigates coming in to try to get these scientists out. And I don't really have any spore clouds out there. So I think I need to do something kind of aggressive, kind of risky, to try to put some pressure on the human players. Ah. Now, because I do have some neuron dice still available, I am able to construct a ship for free. And I think I'm going to construct a fang here. And again, oh, okay. I can construct wherever there's cobras. So here, here, or where the mothership is. Right. And now that I built a sky beam on the land board, I'm able to place out a function cube in a zone above the hemisphere where I have uh, ships. So I'm going to go ahead and place that one right there because I'd like to activate stuff in there. And so now I'm going to select a neuron die to use. And I'm going to use this one, the one that has uh, two uh, filled in diamonds and three hollow circles. Okay. And I'm going to be putting out two function cubes into two different zones. So I'm going to put them out here. And definitely I want to put them out 
here. Ah, all right. So now I'm going to play two command cards from my hand, resolving the top half of this one and the bottom half of this one. Oh, you're activating some cobras. Yes. Now this card allows me to activate only fangs and cobras in locations where I have these function cubes. So I'm going to be activating this cobra in this zone over here. And as a reminder, whenever you activate a cobra, you can perform three actions with it. Yep. And these actions include moving into an adjacent zone, creating spore clouds in the same or an adjacent zone, or torpedoing in the same or adjacent zone. Mm -hmm. And for each of these actions, you get to choose them, which means potentially doing multiple of the same action. Yeah, so I know so, for sure I want to powerful. create some spore clouds here. So okay. I'm going to be moving this cobra in as right. one of the three actions, and uh -huh. then I'm going to create spore clouds twice over there. Twice, okay. Yes. So it's going to be two... Spore clouds right there. So yes. you're you're putting the pressure on this frigate. Yeah, because I know this frigate is going to try to pick up this transport token and usher it to safety, and uh, I want to create some problems. <laughs> and these frigates have five shields, by the way, so this is only two of the five that's going to be needed to mm -hmm. torpedo that thing. So, all right, so this function cube is out. What yeah. are you going to activate next? Hmm. Now, this Cobra might look like it's all alone, but keep in mind, I have four hoods protecting it by giving oh, yeah. it an extra four protection. So a total of eight hit points now to destroy that. There you go. Yep. Plus four. Yeah. Very nice. I like it. The next ship I'm going to activate is coming from the same exact zone. I'm going to activate a Fang because that is one of the two types of ships I'm allowed to. Yeah, might as well. So I'm going to use that cube. And I'm going to go ahead and move and create a Spore Cloud because that's what it's allowed to do. <laughs> real simple, real easy. Yeah, real simple. Yeah. So yeah. we're just creating a little bit of a kind of external barrier outside of uh, that planet. And now I'm going to activate this Cobra in this zone. So I'm going to spend this cube. Okay. And instead of moving, what I'm going to do is just create three Spore Clouds into this adjacent zone oh. because there is adjacency right <sighs> here. That's bad. Yes. The, the uh, Dreadnought only has a total of nine shields. Nine shields. So this is a total of eight spores. That's One right. more spore, and that's going to lower all the shields of that Dreadnought. That's right. And so now I'm going to activate this Fang by spending this cube. I'm going to move adjacent into this zone, and I'm going to create a Spore Cloud. All right. So now we have our nine. There it is. That's it. There you go. Perfect. So that is a total of nine Spore Clouds in that zone. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to go ahead and place these activation tokens yep. just to show that these uh, ships have been activated. Right. So you did a Cobra and one of the Fangs in here as well. Mm -hmm. All right. And the big one that I wanted to do here, the final activation is going to be this Fang in this zone. Uh -huh. And I'm going to go ahead and spend this cube. And I'm just going to straight up torpedo yeah. this Dreadnought. They nice. have a shield of nine. We have three, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow. So that Done. Dreadnought is out, out, and that scores the alien team um, immediately. Yes. Nine victory points. Nine points. So we're so, going to go to the 10, and this Dreadnought cannot come back in. It is yes. out, out of the game. So that is an activated Fang. Good job. Yeah. That was awful. I can see why you decided to go with the Cobras. I had to. Um, yeah, the card I played is actually a really valuable card, but I felt like this was a good time to play it because I saw an opportunity to get enough spores in there to take out that Dreadnought. Nice. And so that was the top of this one. And now I'm going to play the bottom of this card. And this is Orbital Coordination. Uh, what it basically says is I can add focus cubes or remove uh, discord cubes from the principal's bag. And I also may create a cobra. And the amount I get to remove is based off of how many circles that you see uh, on this um, dice right here. So are you going to choose to add focus cubes or remove them? If, if you remove them, it's actually this minus one discord. So... You can either add three focus cubes or remove two. I think I'm going to remove cubes. two. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to take okay. two out of the bag to help us out on the ground a little bit. You don't want to just add three? Uh, no, I think I'm going to take out two. I think uh, I think the math works better that way. Okay. Yeah. And so, as a reminder, we have this bag. We're going to take out two of those white cubes. Yes. And the principal player would be doing this. Yeah, You're yeah. not supposed to touch the principal player's bag. <laughs> I am the principal player. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And now, of course, this last sentence says, I may create a Cobra. And the only legal place that I see it is in this zone here. Because what you do is you remove one of each type of small ship. Yep. And this fits the bill right here. So all three of these go out and they get replaced by this big, beautiful Cobra. Wow. Yes. That is the last Cobra in your supply. They're all in play. Your yeah. whole hand has <laughs> yeah. been, <laughs> has been right. revealed. That's it. Yep. But because I did remove a hood from this zone, this four now becomes a three. So we did lose a little bit of protection, but that's okay. Just by one. I'll take it. Yeah. So that ends my turn. All my cards go into my discard. I take away these activation tokens and that is it. 
Now, going into this round, I thought I was going to actually use my rattles and, and activate them, and putting them into a zone where the principal player could use them on their turn to ground them and help them in battle. Uh, but when I saw that opportunity to take out the Dreadnought, I decided to kind of switch and pivot mm -hmm. and uh, go that direction. Yeah, that was a good move, seeing as the appearance of the Scientist Transport was kind of a new revelation, right? Yeah. The Scientist Transport has to get out of the sub-orbit um, by the end of the next round, or That's else right. they're going to perish. Yep. The unfortunate thing, though, is they can only move one space per round. Right. So as, as the Armada player, I know for a fact that next round I need to get the Scientist Transport out of here. Yep. So I think that you kind of use that knowledge to your advantage and yep. start applying pressure with the Spore Clouds, right? Yeah, exactly. So hopefully, you know, in the future I can kind of try to intercept this um, down the road. But, you know, you, you do have some uh, protection with that frigate there because there's not enough Spore Clouds to completely shoot it out of the sky. Right. And also, before I forget, anytime you do Torpedo, you do have to get rid of a Spore Cloud in that same zone. Oh, we almost forgot that. I know, yeah, it's important. Well, there you have it. That is a full second round of gameplay for the Defense of Procyon 3. There were a couple of things that we were able to showcase that we did not uh, go over in the first round of gameplay, mm -hmm. but there were also some things that we weren't able to touch upon, namely ground strikes, fully saving scientist transports, right. as well as landing rattles and doing bombardments in the city, just to name a few. But we hope that was very helpful in getting you started on playing the Defense of Procyon 3. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and we'll try to answer them as soon as we can. And if you like these kind of videos and you want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.